Well, a very warm welcome to St John's online service. We're really glad that you have joined us. We're all too aware, aren't we, um, this week especially, that cases of COVID are increasing significantly again. Um, many of us will have that uneasy feeling again. We do not know what the future will hold, but we do believe in a God who does and who is faithful and who has promised to always be with us, whatever may happen. Let's begin our time of worship with a prayer. Father God, we thank you for your faithfulness to us, that you have promised always to be with us. We thank you that we can depend on you. And we ask now as we worship together online, that by your spirit you would warm our hearts and inspire our minds to love you more each day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We are in the second of our new series, This Is Living, and we're looking at 1 Peter chapter 2 today, thinking about the new identity we have in Jesus, both as individuals and as a church. Peter describes the church as precious, chosen, beloved. I wonder how that changes, how we see ourselves and how we see each other, the church. Well, we're going to begin with a time of confession now. We are each aware of how short we have fallen in our lives from God's standards of holiness. If you want to join in, the words will be on the screen below. The confession is based on Luke chapter 15. Father God, we have sinned against heaven and against you. We are not worthy to be called your children. We turn to you again. Have mercy on us. Bring us back to yourself as those who were once dead, but now have life through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Well, we're going to sing now a hymn which is taken almost exactly from 1 Peter 2, um, which is our reading today. It's Church of God, Elect and Glorious. Let's sing and praise God wherever we are.
the gathering with other Christians on a Sunday is really important to me because it's building fellowship and it's building friendships and having support and church is the people, it's not the building. Community is the most essential thing really, it's, it's what keeps you going on earth. Even in the Lord's Prayer, if you read in English, there are eight times when we have used we, us or our. There is no I, myself or mine. The fellowship, that when people gather together worshipping God, that's what God wants us to do, what Jesus said, asked of his disciples to do. And we, we, we gather together and worship God and it's, it's, it's God. I think it's important to be gathered together as a church to hear from God's word, to celebrate the Eucharist and to be sent out to change the world and to share God's love. It gives you the opportunity to share time with people who are grounded in the love of God ultimately. I love it. But also being a part of the church allows you to take your faith outside of the four walls of the building speaking to other people about your own beliefs. We have a WhatsApp group for my church, my immediate friends, and we pray for each other through the week. But to actually see each other and connect with each other and worship together is incredibly important, I think. The Trinity is God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and that is a community in itself. And we, as his children, are meant to be that image as well. So a community for us is gathering together as well. Today's reading is from Isaiah 43, 1-7. Now this is what the Lord says. He created you, people of Jacob. He formed you, people of Israel. He says, don't be afraid because I have saved you. I have called you by name and you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you cross rivers, you will not drown. When you walk through fire, you will not be burnt nor will the flames hurt you. This is because I, the Lord, am your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Saviour. I gave Egypt to pay for you, and I gave Cush and Seba to make you mine, because you are precious to me. Because I give you honour and love you, I will give other people in your place. I will give other nations to save your life. Don't be afraid, because I am with you. I will bring your children from the east and gather you from the west. I will tell the north, give my people to you. I will tell the south, don't keep my people in prison. Bring my sons from far away and my daughters from far away places. Bring to me all the people who are mine, whom I made for my glory, whom I formed and made. Amen. The second reading today is 1 Peter chapter 1 verses 13 to 16 and chapter 2 verses 1 to 3 and 9 to 10. Therefore, with minds that are alert and fully sober, set your hope on the grace to be brought to you when Jesus Christ is revealed at his coming. As obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. But just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, Be holy, because I am holy. Therefore rid yourselves of all malice and all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and slander of every kind. Like newborn babies, crave pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow up in your salvation, now that you have tasted that the Lord is good. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Amen. Well, thank you, Anne and Chris, for bringing our readings to us. Let's pray before we think about our 1 Peter reading together. Father God, we thank you so much that we are chosen and loved and precious to you. And we ask now as we reflect on this reading, this letter from 1 Peter, that you would speak to us, guide us, grow us into the people that you want us to be. People who pursue holiness for your glory. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, it is a joy to be able to have weddings again at St John's. And we had one on Friday and there is another in a couple of weeks. They are wonderful celebrations. And the best moment is seeing the groom's face as he turns around and sees his bride walking down the aisle. Brides always look so beautiful. I guess it's a combination of being surrounded by those who love them and also quite a few hours in the hair salon. So when the church is described as the bride of Christ in scripture, we should have a really clear idea of how beautiful she is to God. Peter wants those who he's writing to in his letter to know that they belong and are part of something that is beautiful and precious. He is writing to those who feel like outsiders, they don't feel like they belong in society. In verse 9 he writes this, But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. This is the description God gave to his people Israel at Sinai, recorded in Exodus 19 verse 6. And now it is given to his church, the new Israel. Why does Peter have such an exalted view of the church? Why are they so much more godly, worshipful, evangelistic than us? Why are they all just so super holy without any selfishness or sin? No, of course not. They were just like us, which is of course absolutely wonderful. Now, they were a group of sinful people who had come to Christ for his salvation and were committed to walking in obedience with Jesus. It is in and through Jesus that we have this new identity, not apart from him. And that is why he's our foundation, our cornerstone, as we were thinking about two weeks ago. Together and as individuals, we are precious, chosen, loved and special. We are Christ's bride and his great purposes for us here at St John's and for the wider church too. Do we know that is how he sees us? Do we hear his words of love spoken over us? We, we're so used to criticising the church, doing each other down, that we forget that this is indeed how God sees us in Christ as his beloved bride. Now, of course, that doesn't mean that we have to pretend that everything is okay when it is not. But we do have to start in an entirely different place. A place of seeing what God has done in Christ to redeem each of us by his grace and mercy. Each one of us is loved and saved by Christ and we are each being transformed into something more beautiful day by day. The church is royal, it's holy, it's precious, it's chosen. But Peter writes that God wants us to live like that too. It's the two parts of, of salvation. In technical terms, the justification part, that's us being put right with God once and for all. And then the sanctification bit, the ongoing work of the Holy Spirit who makes us look more like Jesus day by day. Now, I suspect the worst thing that you could say to a bride on her wedding day is, you look just like your dad. That's probably the last thing that she wants to hear. But we do see family resemblances in each other, don't we, of course. I often look at my daughter and see a characteristic, characteristic in her that is just like her dad. That's just what your dad would do, I often say to her. Peter wants the churches he is writing to, to look like the Heavenly Father. He writes in verse 13, As obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. 
But just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, be holy because I am holy. Our holiness is not something that is very much valued in society. I'm not even sure we speak about it much in the church. But holiness is about living as, as it were, as we were made to by our creator. Holiness is about reaching our potential, being alive, being free from guilt and shame, full of purpose for life. We always see holiness in such a sombre and Victorian way. But holiness is truly about following a way of life that fits us best, that is designed for our flourishing, because it is a way of life designed by our creator. And so it cannot be anything but good. The Holy Spirit is the one who makes things grow and thrive. Good things, noble, pure, joyous things in our lives. His character is not to make things dull and dust desiccated. Peter wants us to get rid of all malice, deceit, hypocrisy, envy, slander of every kind. That's verse one of chapter two. And to crave pure spiritual milk now that you have tasted that the Lord is good. We have just uh, got a, sh a new shower fitted and it is incredibly different to the old one. It's sparkling clean, the tiles are white, the chrome is shining, the water is warm and soft and it doesn't leak. It would be really strange for us to long for the old one or indeed pay for it to be fitted back. Equally going forward, the shower may be new, but it won't stay sparkling for long without daily wiping and cleaning. And in a little way, that is the same with our Christian lives. We have tasted the Lord's goodness. Why would we want anything else? Why would we want to return to a life without Jesus, without the hope of his transformation of us. Yes, obedience to God's ways is hard. It is a daily task, watching our words, turning the other cheek, putting others' needs first before ourselves, being generous to one another. Sometimes his call on us does seem so hard, but we have the Holy Spirit living in us and so we have his help each day. Ultimately, the reason for pursuing holiness is God's glory. But you are a chosen people that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Our praise bears witness to God in the world. The love and light and life that he offers is for all people. And we are the means by which people see God. That is a huge challenge, as well as a privilege for each one of us. May we live as his chosen and holy people inwardly for his praise and glory. Amen. We're now going to sing um, a new song for many. It's called Who You Say I Am. It goes like this, I'm chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. Those are the words that the great I am himself says about us. He says it in our Isaiah reading and in our Peter reading. And if he says it, then it must be true. So as you listen and maybe sing along to this song, may you receive the words of love that it speaks over you. Who am 
my that the highest king would welcome me I was lost but he brought me in oh his love for me oh his love for me who the sun sets free oh it's free His grace runs deep While I was a slave to sin Jesus died for me Yes, He died for me Let us pray. We praise and worship you, Holy Father, Almighty God, Creator of all things, for the glory of your creation, and particularly the joy this week of beautiful sunny days. We praise and thank you, Lord, that we are precious to you, and that your love for us endures forever. We come before you now in prayer, trusting in your great mercy and love for us. Thank you, Father, that you are our shelter in the storms of life, our strong tower in this COVID crisis. We pray for your mercy and healing for all who have the virus, and particularly for the vulnerable and those in care homes and all who look after them. We ask for your mercy, strength and protection, Lord, for all facing unemployment, financial difficulties, and for those who are homeless, 
feeling isolated or lonely. We pray for our government as they make decisions about managing and containing the virus and for the Brexit negotiations. We pray for vision, compassion and integrity in all their work. We pray for our world, Lord, wherever there is hunger, poverty, violence, refugees, for those who are facing wildfires and all in fear of the virus. Holy Father, we pray for your mercy, grace and provision for each and every person in every situation and pray that your light and love will shine in these dark places, bringing love, strength and hope. We pray for your protection and blessing on all who care for and bring relief to those suffering. We lift you our young people in this church as they return to school and begin college or university. Holy Father, we pray for your mighty hand over them, your love surrounding them, and pray they will always put their trust in you. Have mercy, Holy Father, on all suffering in body, mind or spirit, because of illness, anxiety or depression, and those grieving loved ones. We pray that you will be close to them, Lord, and uphold them. May they take strength from your words in Isaiah 43. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Saviour. We pray for our church family, for Leslie, Sarah, Pat and our PCC as they meet this week. We pray that you will inspire their discussions and guide their decisions. We continue to pray for your love and grace for Eddie and Elizabeth. Holy Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Well, thank you, Jill, for leading us in our prayers. Do join us after this service on Zoom at 11.30 for coffee and chat. It'd be lovely to see you. And it's good so much to encourage each other in our faith. As a reminder that our APCM is taking place this year on Zoom on Wednesday, the 21st of October. Anyone on St John's electoral roll can participate and vote. So if you're not on the electoral roll and you would like to be, there is a chance uh, to apply online via the website or um, via a form which you can obtain um, from the office. So as we go out into this new week, knowing who we are in Jesus, our closing prayer from Revelation 1. To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood and has made us to be a kingdom and priests to serve his God and Father. To him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and Holy Spirit be with you and all whom you love this day and forevermore. Amen. So go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.